Halleluja. As we were worshiping, as we were worshiping, I just felt to challenge you to consider taking your worship to another level. This is, my, this is going to be different probably than what you expect. But I was talking to my friend Peter today from India, and Peter was telling me there's no one to sound the shofar in Israel, I mean in India. There's no one sounding the shofar in India. Would any of God's shofar blowers go to India to sound the shofar where no one is sounding the shofar? I'm going Wednesday. I have my ticket. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. Glory. Would any of God's dancers go to India or Ethiopia or Nigeria or Bulgaria or whatever it is that God wants to free his people to worship like they have never worshipped before? Would God's flag wavers go to teach someone in a nation that has never waved a flag? And I know there's nations like that because we sent the conference DVDs from last year which had flag teachings on them and I received calls and emails from places like Uganda, from places like India, and they had never seen worship in that way before. And it was like we're doing here now. God wants us to take these ways that we worship him to a new level and use them to bring in the end time harvest. It could be something as simple as a car wash. We hold car washes here on Saturdays several times in the summer. And before one of those car washes, the Lord said to me, put your shofar blowers out on the road. Put your flag wavers out on the road. Get your dancers out on the road. We can take these gifts and we can use them to reach a lost world. This ain't in the notes, folks. This is thus saith the Lord. It's time to take all that God has showed you and use it to reach the lost souls in this world. The question is, are you willing to do what God wants us to do? I, I was watching as we were worshiping. It was awesome. And part of me was saying, what would it be like for what we just experienced to happen in the city park? Yeah. What would it be like to take this Freedom out there and let lost souls see it. They think Christianity is boring. They don't know our God. They know what religion has showed them. Freedom. That's what the world needs. Freedom. And God is liberating us to take that freedom to those out there that need it. 
What's your part in that? Hallelujah. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, the scripture says, In what place, therefore, you hear the sound of the trumpet, the shofar, resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. Our God shall fight for us. Four months ago, we started airing the footage that was filmed at the last conference on television. And when I answered the phone for the very first time, the very first caller, the Holy Spirit spoke to me so clearly, I want you to pray a blessing over each person before you hang up, and I want you to sound the shofar over them. There was a lady called just Monday, and she said, she didn't even ask for prayer. She was buying a product. And before I got off, I said, I have to obey God, and I'm to pray a blessing over you. And the Holy Spirit quickened to me to ask, do you have a specific need? And she said, yes, I have sugar, and I have wounds on my feet, and they won't heal. They've tried this and they've tried that and they just won't heal. The sugar's got the best of me. And as she said that, again to my remembrance came two people in Trinidad and Tobago years ago, the Carla and I prayed for, and they both had sugar. After we got home from that trip, we got letters. And both of those people were touched by the hand of God and they were healed. And you see, God brought that to my remembrance. And I shared it with that lady. And I said, you know, I serve a healing God. And I'm going to pray for you now. I'm going to sound the shofar over you. And I'm going to hang up the phone at the end of the prayer. And I prayed and I said, God, take her God into that cleft of the rock God that you took Moses. I said, God, take her into the shalom Take her into the place, God, where we lack for nothing because everything we need, God, is in you and it's provided, God, in you. Amen. And I prayed that prayer and I blew the shofar and I hung up the phone. And if I heard no more, that's okay because I did what God told me to do. I followed the leading of the Holy Spirit in each instance. And that's truly, people, all our what God wants from us. He wants us to obey Him. Yes. He wants us to allow Him to break in to our every moment of our every day when He wants to break in. If you, you might be in the middle of doing dishes and God wants to break in and you worship Him. Yes. God just wants to break in. Yesterday, that lady called me back. She said, I don't know if you remember me or if you do not, but I had to call you. I've been back to the doctor, and my wounds are healing. Thank you, Jesus. In, a pla in the place where the trumpet is sounded, my God will fight for me over the telephone where the trumpet is sounded. My God will fight for me. Those of you who are serious about blowing the shofar, get ready. If you obey God, you'll see the miraculous. And it ain't about you. And it ain't about the shofar. It's about God. It's about obedience. It's about doing what God says to do at the moment that God says to do it. Pure obedience. That's what God wants. In Exodus chapter 14, starting in verse 13, And Moses said unto the people, 
Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today shall see them, you, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. In the place where the trumpet is sounded, your God will fight for you. When God fights for you, he'll drive off the enemy and you will see them no more. Sickness and disease are your enemy. God will fight your enemy. In the place where the trumpet is sounded, God will drive off your enemy. How many believe that tonight? If you've got a sickness in your body, stand to your feet. If you've got pain in your body, stand to your feet. If you need any type of healing at all, stand to your feet. In the place where the trumpet is sounded, my God, your God will fight for you. Just like he fought for that lady that had sugar, he'll fight for you in the place. In this place where the trumpet is sounded, where the shofar is sounded, your God will fight for you. In Exodus 14, 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind and all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all the Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us free, flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of the Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. Look what happens when your God fights. There are no limitations to what God can and will do 
when he fights for you. When God fights for you, it's supernatural in nature. Moses could have lifted his hand all he wanted, but without God backing it, nothing would have happened. In the place where the shofar is sounded, your God will do supernatural things. I remember a meeting up in Coldwater, Michigan. A lady was over on this side of the building. When she came into the meeting, she had one good ear and one deaf ear. At the end of the meeting, she came up. I got to tell you tonight, when I came in here, I could only hear in this one. But now I can hear from both. Supernatural. In the place where the trumpet is sounded, my God will fight for me. And we serve a supernatural God. Let me give you another example of how God will fight for somebody. Carla and I were ministering in a church in Connecticut. If I got my story right. If not, she'll tell me. She'll straighten me up. But there was a lady came forward for prayer. And the lady said she had been bound by demonic oppression on her job. She said, I've lost my joy, basically. I hate going to work. And Carla prayed for her. The power of God hit her and phew, fell on the floor. While she laid on the floor under the hand of God, the Holy Spirit said to her, buy a ram's horn and take it to your job and sound. Now, if that was you, what would you do? Now, I know a few of you would obey God. But I got a hunch a lot of you would say, oh, that's crazy. Uh-uh, not me. But you see, God wants us to be radically obedient in the church, we cry for healings and miracles and signs and wonders. And if we just obey God, he would show us more than we can handle. But you see, we want to lay hands and heal each other in the church. And God says, when you're in the grocery store and somebody says, I got a headache, he wants you to pray for him right there. He wants radical obedience. That lady... Got up, went to the table, bought a shofar, a little ram's horn. Took that ram's horn to work. She worked in an office complex. You know, a busy building with people. Imagine if this is your job. Maybe you work in a law office or doctor's office or, you know, whatever. Imagine. And this person comes in and. Her boss came running out. <laughs> Did you do that? This was an unsaved man. He didn't know God. But he said, that is the most awesome sound that I have ever heard in my life. You see, the scripture says that the voice of God is like that of the sound of a shofar. God has placed eternity in the heart of every man. So there's a part of God in every man. And that part of that man recognized God. When we're obedient to take his instrument out into the world, he will use it to touch people. In that office complex, where that lady felt demonic oppression and really just wanted to throw in the towel. 
four people, now get a hold of this now, not one, not two, not three, but four people in one week's time bowed their knees to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Give the Lord a shout. In the place, in the office complex, where the shofar was sounded, her God fought for her. Her God did something supernatural, reaching into the hearts of four souls. God did it. I think that's a good reason to blow the shofar in the morning in your house. I think it's a good, re a good reason to blow the shofar at the flagpole at the high school. I think it's a good reason to blow the shofar in the factory where you work. Because God will fight. And when he fights, he wins. <laughs> He wins all the time. Hallelujah. In the book of Joshua, chapter 23, verse 3. And you have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight and you shall possess their land. As the Lord your God hath promised unto you, for the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised. When our God fights for us, he will expel people from your presence. He will expel demonic forces from your presence. He will drive them out of your sight. And he will give you the power to possess the land in the place where the trumpet is sounded, in the place where the shofar is sounded. Your God will fight for you. The voice of God is like that of the sound of a shofar. The breath of God is creative in nature. Oh, Lord, breathe on us tonight. Breathe on us tonight, God. Breathe on us, God. This night. Is that your prayer tonight? Do you want God to breathe on you tonight?
Don't be surprised if you had pain in parts of your body and ain't there anymore. Because pain don't belong to you. And in a place where the shofar is sounded, your God will fight for you. Oh, and when he fights, when he fights, Carla and I were in a church in Baltimore, Maryland. And I had poured out my heart because I knew there were lost souls in that church. I pleaded with them. I begged them to come to that altar. And they wouldn't budge. And the Holy Spirit says, blow the ram's horn. And Jim said, that's crazy. I said, God, what has a ram's horn got to do with evangelism? I mean, God, that just don't make no sense to me. Any of you ever do that? Fuss with God? He tells you something and you argue because you're smarter or you think you are? A anybody? Just me. <laughs> She's honest. Truth is, probably about every hand in the place could have gone up. After I got done fussing, I mean, you had to have been there. I mean, I pleaded and pleaded and pleaded. I beg of you, I beseech you, come to God today. Nobody would move. And you sometimes you just know, you know, you know, you know that there's lost people there and they need Jesus and they're fighting it. You just know it. And when I got done fussing, I never saw anything like it before. Twelve people got up out of the, I never said another word. I just blew the ram swarm. Twelve people got up out of their seats and they ran to the altar. I mean, they literally, they were running to Jesus. And as my brother said, come home. My little lost sheep. It didn't make any sense to me. It still doesn't make any sense to me. But when that, which is like the voice of God, which the scripture tells us, goes forth into the atmosphere, it connects to the heart, that place called eternity, that God, has put in every man, woman, and child that there ever was or ever will be. It's crazy. It's radical. But it's God. And it's all about obedience. It's about doing what God says to do at the moment that God says to do. Where's one of my favorite flag wavers, Sister Lupe? When I watch you wave that flag, it's like you come to life. You, you go into a dimension of worship. I can't explain it. Tonight it brought tears to my eyes. But I tell you, it's Jesus. But I tell you this. If God told you to take a flag and go to some certain intersection or some certain street or some certain place and run with that flag. Something, I'm telling you, something would happen. God wants to use all of our talents and abilities. He wants to break in on the moment every day, no matter where we're at, and use our talents and abilities 
to reach lost souls for his kingdom. Whatever that ability is, whatever that talent is, yield it to Jesus. Yield it to the Holy Ghost. Be sensitive and listen and allow him to just break in and watch what God does. Pat, it may be something as simple as you're in a grocery store and the Holy Ghost says, just do a twirl for me. That could lead to a conversation. And somebody said, why'd you do that? I did that because I love my God. I did that because I love my Jesus. What I sense in my heart tonight is God saying to his people, it's time to sell out to me completely. It's time to start doing Whatever I tell you to do, wherever you're at, do what I tell you to do at the moment I tell you to do it. That's where the healings come. That's where the miracles come. That's where the deliverances come. And that's when people get saved. A lot of sheep hear him, but not so many obey would you dare to be radical? Hallelujah, Jesus. In the place where the trumpet is sounded, my God will fight for me. In the prison where the trumpet is sounded, God will fight for those prisoners. Is there a shofarim in the house that would dare to take it into the prison? Hallelujah. The voice of God is like that of the sound of a shofar. Let's read a couple scriptures about the voice of God. Isaiah 33, verse 2. But Lord, be merciful to us, for we have waited for you. Be our strong arm each day and our salvation in times of trouble. The enemy runs at the sound of your voice. When you stand up, the nations flee. In the place where the shofar is sounded, the enemy runs. Sickness is the enemy. Depression is the enemy. It runs at the sound of his voice. And the shofar represents that voice. If you've been depressed, you don't have to be anymore. Your God will fight for you. In Psalm 29, verse 3, the voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mountains skip like a calf. He makes Mount Hermon leap like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare in his temple. Everyone shouts, glory! Can you say glory tonight? Psalm 46, 6, the nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. 
Psalm 104, 7. And they rebuke, they fled at the voice of thy thunder. They hasted away. John 5, 28. Don't be surprised, indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's Son. One of my favorites, John eleven forty three, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The voice of the Lord is creative. It is powerful. In the place where the shofar is sounded, that which is like the voice of God is released into the atmosphere. And God fights for his people. These are a lot of good reasons for us to take the shofar beyond the walls of the church. I want to do a little experiment. Everyone that has a ram's horn with them, would you stand up so I can see how many people have a ram's horn with them? Not a, not a Yemenite, a ram's horn, just the ram's horn. You don't, you don't have to get it out. I just want to see how many people have one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, you can be seated. Now I want everybody to stand that has a Yemenite shofar with them. About double. You can be seated. The Yemenite symbolically rep represents victory. It's glory. And the church loves to hear the victory. The ram horn symbolically represents repentance. It's a cry. And for the most part, the church doesn't like the cry of the ram's horn. If we want the victory that the Yemenite represents, we've got to come through the repentance to get there. Sister Teresa touched on a scripture today, and I'm going to touch on it again. Ezekiel 33, starting in verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and they set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the shofar and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the shofar and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He, hear the, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall, be deli shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet or the shofar, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is not taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. A few years ago, God gave me a vision, a dream, I don't want whatever you want to call it, 
but there were shofar blowers on the balcony. And they are a form of watchmen. And there were also prayer intercessors on the balcony, our wall. And they are watchmen. But right now, I want to talk specifically to the watchmen that have the shofar. I believe that everyone that God has called as a watchman must send forth a decree or the sound that God is saying to send forth. Even if we like the sound of the Yemenite better and we like the sound of victory better, when God says to decree repentance, then we must decree repentance. If you are serious about the Father's business and serious about the call to sound the shofar, I want to challenge those who only use a Yemenite to consider having both and using the one that God says to use at the moment that God says to use it. It would be very easy to please people. And when you're called to teach on the shofar, the way you please people is you blow the trumpet that represents victory. Everybody loves it. But the only way to truly get to the victory is on our knees. Consider the sound of the ram's horn. If I would have not have had the ram's horn in the two situations that I shared with you earlier, the one situation personally where I blew it and 12 people ran to the altar, if I was not equipped with the right tools to do what God has called me to do, those 12 people would not have ran to that altar. If that lady who was equipped with a ram's horn had not taken that ram's horn into that office, those four souls would have not come to Jesus that day, that week. You see, God very specifically told her, take a ram's horn to your office. As watchmen, We've heard some messages that God wants us to carry back to where we came from. And as watchmen, it is up to us to decree the things that God has given us. I know there are some here that have already told me, I never knew that an evangelist had a responsibility in the local church to equip the saints to share Jesus. I thought I had to do it all. Well, now, 
it's time to take that message and become a carrier of it and go back and decree it. If you decree it and it is not received, the blood is not on your hands. It might be something as simple as you know a person who has told you, it's not my job to share my faith. But you know it is. You know the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20 that backs it up. If you go to them and you tell them, the Bible says it is your job to share your faith. The blood is not on your hands. But if you don't warn them of what you know, if you don't tell them of what you know, whose blood, whose hands will the blood be on? There's so much about this instrument of God that I just don't understand. All I know is that 10 or 11 years ago, God put this in my hand. Any, any of you all ever feel like you're not hitting the mark? Like, like you're not accomplishing the mission? I, I was going through that here within the last month. And as I was going through that, I was naming all of my failures. And God said to me, Jim, did I, tell you, did I not tell you to equip my army with shofars? I said, yes, God, you did. Jim, aren't you doing that? Haven't you done that? Thank you, Jesus. Why God chose me, I don't know. But we have been able to send thousands and thousands of shofars all over the world and put them into the hands of God's people. And I believe it is preparation for the end time harvest. I want to ask those who blow shofars to think of this as a different type of equipment today. Like a sickle. Like a sickle for bringing in the harvest. This is one of the most awesome tools for getting the attention of people in the world. I've blown it on public beaches and man, do people gather in a hurry. Let's take that which is like the voice of God out into the world and use it to reach lost souls. You see, one of the areas that we're having a problem with this instrument and God's people is we want to be entertainers in the house of the Lord. God didn't give us this to be entertainers in the house of the Lord. He gave us this to declare his sovereignty on this earth. And the place we need to declare his sovereignty is out there, not in here. He wants us to take that which is like his voice out there. How do, how do you know if you're your shofar blower or you're God's shofar blower? God's shofar blower will go anywhere that God says so. But if we're our own shofar blower, we want to do it in the comfort and coziness of the house of God. And do we need to sound it for his glory? Yes, absolutely. That isn't what I'm talking about. Yes, we need to declare it. We need to sound it. We need to praise him with it. We need to worship him with it. That's all part of it. But it's only part of it. He wants us to go further. He wants us. God wants us to go to India, to go to places 
that no one is sounding the shofar, that no one is releasing that which is like the voice of God. And I ask you to think about it for a moment. Those of you who have already been blowing the shofar, think about this. Am I my shofar blower? Or am I God's shofar blower? And if you've been your shofar blower, Father, forgive me. You've been God's shofar blower. Keep doing what you're doing. In the place where the shofar is sounded, my God will fight for me. Sister Lisa, could you come? I've had several of you that have said to me since we've started that you've been using our book on the ministry of the shofar and you've been using the DVD D set, not the DVD set, but the, the shofar video and that you've been using them and teaching them and God is raising you up as a teacher to teach on the shofar. And I think that is just awesome. I want to encourage you to go to another level now if you haven't already got it. There's a three DVD set out there. God has taken us to a new level. He showed us more. There's four hours of teaching and ministry on it. If you haven't got it and you're serious about the shofar and doing what God has called you to do, Consider getting that. Let's all stand. I want to sound the shofar in a minute. But what I sense God saying to me is very specific. I think it's a good thing to listen and obey. But what I sense him saying to me is he wants me to blow the shofar. And I'm not talking right now to those of you who already know that you're supposed to sound the shofar. But just for a minute, I want to talk to those that may have never, ever even thought about it before. Or maybe you've thought about it, you just haven't come to that place of committing. But as the shofar is sounded, I simply want you to ask a question. God, are you calling me? to sound that alarm and if he says no then it's no but if he says yes then you need to start obeying God in the scripture it says in Exodus that the trumpet was sounded long and waxed louder and louder and Moses spoke to God and God answered him by voice I believe God will answer tonight in that same way. So ask him that question right now. God, are you calling me to blow the trumpet, the shofar?
if you've asked him, and he said yes. And this is new to you. I want you to quickly come forward. And I want to pray for you. Only those who hadn't answered the call before come now. Don't fight it if it's you. Would everybody extend their hands and pray for those that have come up? Some of the ushers come, please. Do you want to come down? Moses, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those of you already who blow the trumpet, you should re- be rejoicing. You should be pressing in right now as God expands his army. God expands his army. In a moment, I want to pray for each of you and lay hands on you. Believe for an impartation. Before I pray for you, before I lay hands on you, you, you must be teachable. There's so much about this instrument we do not know and we do not understand, but we must be teachable and willing to learn and willing to obey God and willing to do what God says to do at the moment that God says to do it. You must be willing to obey the leadership of your local church, wherever that might be. God is a God of order, and he will not do things out of his order. And you must submit your gift to the ministry that you are under and to the leadership of that ministry. These prayer shawls that are being placed upon you are symbolic of the mantle symbolic of the anointing after we've prayed for you please leave the prayer shawls behind sometimes they try to walk out the door accidentally I'm sure but one of the questions often asked is can I have this one or can I buy it And if that's your heart's desire, you take it to the table on your way out and you'll be taken care of. In the Bible, there was a prophet by the name of Elijah. And Elijah went up to heaven. And when he went up, he cast down his mantle. And his student, his one in training, grabbed a hold of that mantle my desire is that God will use each of you 
far greater than he's ever used me. My desire is that when I lay my hands upon you, that you will receive a double portion of the anointing to blow the trumpet in Zion, to do that which God has called you to do. This isn't about me. And it's not about you. It's about being a willing vessel to just radically obey God and do what God says to do at the moment that God says to do it. A sovereign God. A sovereign God. A sovereign God. Sister Teresa, come. Carla, come. 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 As I pray for each one of these, I want you to follow up and obey God. Listen to the Spirit of God and do what God says to do. Father, I thank you for the anointing to blow the trumpet in Zion. I ask God that it be released, released in Jesus' name. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. 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 Release. Release. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. More. Blow. More. The ram's on. It's the same thing. Same thing. It's still a shofar. That repentant cry. That repentant cry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for a heart that says, God, I'm willing to obey. I'm willing, God, to do what you want me to do. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to hear your voice. More, God. More. 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 Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Oh. Uh -huh. you've, you've said, God, I want to do more. And I want to do more faster. And he's given you the tools. And he ain't done. This week ain't over yet. He's given you some. But he's got more. In Jesus' name, receive. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Oh, oh God. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet. Blow ye the trumpet. Oh, 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 blow you the trumpet of Zion, blow you the, oh, God, oh, 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 God, Woo. blow you the trumpet in Zion, oh, 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 lift thy voice like a trumpet, lift thy voice, oh, hey, God, blow you the trumpet in Zion, God. Woo! Hey! 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 Oh! Oh God! The army of God!
those of you who have already been summoned into God's army as a shofar blower, I want you to start and line up over here. You've already been part of the army. You're already blowing the shofar for God. I want you to come up here. Come now. Come now. Make two or three rows. Everybody on this side. You're called to blow the shofar. Line up over here. Hallelujah. Do you want me to do what you expect? Or do you want me to do what God says? Well, here's what God says. God says I'm a sovereign God. And tonight, he doesn't need any man to lay his hands upon you because he's a sovereign God. And all he's telling me to do is to blow the shofar over you. And you know what? I'm sure it'll be enough because I serve a God that's more than enough. Extend your faith. Reach out. A fresh fire. As I spoke that word fire, God reminded me of, a, of, a, of two prophetic words that were spoke over me when I was a babe in the Lord. Someday you will be one of God's fire babies. I've had people tell me that they've seen waves of fire go across auditoriums as the shofar has been sounded. I believe there's going to be an impartation into your lives tonight. Healings, signs, wonders, the miraculous. But listen to me. Bring it down just a little bit, just for a minute. But listen to me. It all hinges on this. It all hinges on this. You got to be God's shofar blower. You got to do what God says to do at the moment that God says to do it. And you will see things you've never seen before. You will walk in an anointing that you have not yet walked in. But you've got to obey Him and do exactly what He says to do. Receive. Breath of God. Breath of God. Breath of God. Breath of God. I think about the mighty rushing wind in the book of Acts. And I think, could it have been God blowing a shofar? One thing I know it was for sure, it was the breath of God. 
It was the breath of the almighty living God. And as his chauffeur reams, he wants you to be carriers of his breath. Father, my prayer for every person that is answering the call is, Father, the next time they raise your instrument to their lips, that it would not be the breath of a man, but, God, that it would be the breath of the Raha Kadesh. It would be the breath of the Holy Spirit. It would be the breath of the living God of Israel. If you believe it, shout to the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him.
Open up. 